All right, let's get into our first big story. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency said it is working to overcome legal hurdles stopping the extradition of Senator Buruji Kashamu to the United States on drug-related charges. Now, a U.S. court recently rejected an appeal by the senator seeking to stop his extradition by U.S. authorities uh, to face drug trafficking charges. Uh, well, we're now joined uh, by Ajibola Uliyede. He is the counsel uh, to the man in the eye of the storm, Senator Buruji Kashamu. Uh, good morning and good thanks morning. for joining us. Mm, uh, but before we uh, start this discussion, let's give you a background to the story. In May of 1998, a grand jury charged Buruji Kashamu and 14 others in a second superseding indictment with conspiracy to import heroin into the United States. Now, nine of the 14 defendants between 1998 and January 1999 pled guilty to the charges against them. The United States government requested the issuance of a provisional arrest warrant against Kashamu and upon arrival in London, Metropolitan Police in December of 1998 arrested Kashamu. Now, Buruji Kashamu was released after spending about five years in a British jail. The United States in 2003 tried to extradite him from the UK but failed. He then returned to Nigeria and became involved in the political arena. Kashamu then filed a motion in February 2009 through his lawyers in the US to quash the arrest warrant on him. But uh, the district court uh, judge upheld the US position and denied Kashamu's motion. Now the judge also declared Buruji Kashamu a fugitive. Now, in 2015, Kashamu sued the U.S. government to prevent an imminent illegal abduction in Nigeria. Now, NDLEA operatives on May the 23rd, 2015, confined Senator Buruji Kashamu to his home pending his appearance in the court to perfect extradition proceedings to the United States after the agency claimed he had received a formal extradition request from the United States. Kashamu immediately sought the protection of the court against the anti-drug agency from detaining or extraditing him, a request that got him a favorable response from the court. Now, the NDLEA also went to court to challenge the ruling, insisting that the extradition treaty uh, between Nigeria and the U.S. on drug and other offenses be upheld. A federal high court in Abuja dismissed it for lack of jurisdiction. The federal government sued uh, seeking Senator Kashamu's arrest and extradition to the U.S., describing it as an abuse of court process. Now, a ruling by the U.S. Court of Appeals in Chicago last week Friday dismissed Kashamu's suit against the U.S. government, which has now renewed the NDLEA's drive to extradite the embattled senator. Now, Head of Public Affairs of the NDLEA, Michelle Ofoyeju, was in our studio, and this is what he had to say on the matter. We have the obligation to effect the transfer of such an individual to the U.S. Same thing with us. If we need anybody that is in the U.S. based on that treaty, they will assist us by transferring the person here to face trial because of uh, the area of jurisdiction. All right, uh, let's get to uh, the issue proper. Now, the, the head of uh, public affairs there said the NDLEA has an obligation based on uh, the extradition treaty between the United States mm -hmm. and Nigeria. Now, give us a background. When, we ha when that kind of treaty exists, how should this issue be handled in the first place? I think you, you really need a thorough background mm -hmm. in the sense that most mm -hmm. of what you've said mm -hmm. is completely inaccurate or even completely incorrect. All right, make us well, understand. Yes. Everything you've said so far, first of all, uh, the grand jury never indicted uh, Buruji Kashamu. The indictment was made by the grand jury in 1994. In 1994, a group of young people, mostly students, were caught mm -hmm. at the airport in Chicago with drugs, and they were charged. They were before they were brought before the grand jury for an indictment, mm -hmm. and of course because they were caught red-handed, they were summarily indicted by the grand jury. Now, in a plea bargain with them by the United States authority, they were yes. asked to name their accomplices around the world. And they gave an information that they had a West African collaborator mm -hmm. and who they did not know his name. They knew him as Alaji. 
Now, from 1994 to 1998, the, uh, no, no, nothing happened except for the you know, uh, in, you know, conviction of those people who had already confessed to the crime. They were caught red-handed. Mm -hmm. And they were given, you know, palliative uh, sentences because they were cooperating with the authorities. Yes. Now, nobody knows till today how Buruji Kashamu's name was introduced into that indictment in That's a question I want to mm. ask. How did he come Nobody to be in the picture today. then? Okay. Now, but there was a description given yes. of the accomplice. They said, we know his name as Alaji. We know him to be a dealer in uh, uh, Dewu, for Dewu Motors in Kutonu. Now, it so happens that Bridget Kashamu and his junior brother, Adewale Kashamu, mm. had a joint venture which involved representing Dewu Motors mm -hmm. in Kutonu. Mm -hmm. Now, Buruji Kajamu has never been to America, he's never been there, but his brother schooled there, Adewale schooled there. And therefore, mm -hmm. you know, the description in their mind, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it was Buruji they chose, not Adewale. Okay, right, we'll let's... Definitely <laughs> exactly, we, we need to go on the yeah. break now. So mm -hmm. when we come back, you will continue with the background because mm -hmm. we need to understand all of this. Stay with us on okay. TVC Breakfast. Let's go on the break and we come back. All right, you're welcome back. You're watching TVC Breakfast and we're looking at the Buruji Kashamu case. Uh, uh, well, this has been going on for quite a number of years now, since 1994, 96, if I'm correct, 1994. Well, we have his lawyer uh, right here in the studio, Ajibola Uluyede, who uh, is trying to shed some light on this for us. Now, we have heard in the cause of all of this moves to extradite uh, Buruji Kashamu, uh, that, that's quoting Buruji himself, that it was actually his brother who was involved in this case and not him himself. Now, I want you to tell us where does the law stand in terms of does it permit him not to go before the, the court to actually defend himself and to clear himself? Well, the information I gave you now yes. is not from the air, it's on record. Mm -hmm. This is information that the courts have already accepted. The courts in England, the, the, the United States, on the basis of that warrant, of the, on the basis of that indictment, the introduction mm -hmm. of his name in 1998, yes. issued a, a warrant for his arrest all over the world. Now, at the point, at that point in time, Bruji Kasham was a very prominent businessman in the Benin Republic. He had the big, he still has one of the biggest cotton ginery factories in West Africa, mm. situated in that country. Mm. Now, so he was very prominent in the, in, the, in the Benin Republic, even involved in their politics, as he is here today. Yes. So, and I believe that is the reason they chose him. So, in 1998, he was he traveled to England as he normally did in the course of his business at the airport. He declared that he, as usual, that he was carrying currency. When you say chose, it gives an impression that the American court, the U.S. court, has the liberty to just choose anybody they like, uh, you know, if no, they've been not, accused or not. not. the court. Guess what? The Who, court, who's choosing now? The court now? is an umpire. Okay. It's the authorities. The, the, the U.S. Department. authorities? Yes, the, the, the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, the Department of Justice in the United States is not centralized. They're broken into districts. You know, okay. So you have a district attorney in charge of a particular district. Mm -hmm. That district attorney for that purpose is the attorney general in that district. You know, and you will remember there's one Fitzgerald, the very, very famous district attorney for that northern district of Illinois, which mm -hmm. involves, which includes Chicago and other places. If you remember, it was the one who had the governor arrested, the governor of uh, Illinois, you know, arrested mm -hmm. for, cor for corruption. So it's a very prominent, so they have a lot of power. And they have other people working with them. So we don't know how they conducted their investigation. We've been asking them to produce the evidence till today. They have not. Why did you choose Buruji Kashamu and not Adewale Kashamu? So when he, when he got into England, he was arrested at the airport. He told them right away. Once they told him, oh, we, America has a warrant for you for drug charges. He said, it's not me. It's my brother. He told them from the airport. Now, they kept him in that place. They took him before the courts. The court summarily in an extradition proceeding at the instance of the United States government in England. Mm -hmm. The court summarily committed him and said, take him to America. It was, 
whilst they were preparing to export him to America, that by mistake, his lawyers came into possession while they were preparing papers of a, a, a um, identification parade report conducted by the United States itself mm -hmm. when he was arrested at the airport. When you say he now, you're referring to Buruji's brother? No, no. Or I'm, Buruji himself? Buruji himself. Okay, now is Buruji's brother, uh, what's his name? Adewale. Adewale, is he a fugitive from American government right now? Is he? You, see, you try and get an understanding of what the circumstances are. Then you, your questions will be more relevant. Okay. You see, what has happened here is that what Buruji Kashamu has been arrested in mm -hmm. 1998. He's brought before the court. An European parade was conducted by the United States government to be sure he is the one they want. How did they conduct the European parade? They took mm -hmm. his picture to the people who confessed to the crime and claimed that they had a West African uh, collaborator and mm -hmm. said, is this the man? They put it amongst other pictures. And the, the head of that team of, of young people yes. said, no, I know him, but he's not the one. So they kept that report. They did not produce it to the court in England. So when the lawyers by mistake, they were asking for papers and they, somebody from the US sent them that report by mistake. So when they got that report, they now went to the court and said, look, they suppressed evidence that exonerated our client. That's why the court committed him. So the high court gave its judgment in 2000 and said this was unbecoming. They used language that normally they do, nobody in diplomacy will use against another government and said, why did you suppress evidence that exonerated this man? So you know he was not the one. So they struck out the commitment, mm -hmm. the committal. Now, that very day was rearrested at the instance of the United States government again. Then they brought him before the court again, saying they had additional evidence that he was the one. Now, that trial lasted three years, from 2000 to 2003. And at the end of that trial, the English court said that the evidence brought by the United States government was false. And that from the evidence before, he, before them, it was a case of mistaken identity. Mm -hmm. and that this is not the person you are looking for and you know the person you are looking for is Adewale Kashamu. Why are, you, why are you pursuing this man? So I'm going to discharge and he was discharged in 2003, 10th of January 2003 was discharged by a UK court and, and normally in extradition matters, the court doesn't go as far as to say uh, this is not the man. It would just say look, you haven't given me enough evidence, I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. But in this case a finding was made by the court that this is not the person you are looking for this is the person and you are looking for. Identified somebody else. Yes. As All right. The now, man. We, we, well, let's let's play because we had the uh, head of public affairs of the NDL here on this case before. Let's let's listen to some of the things he said on this that we can. He gives us uh, a broader perspective. It's amazing that uh, you know he can be so vociferous in spite of uh, the weight of allegations against right. him. <laughs> to me, that is simply diversionary because uh, if you accuse me of not having a certificate which I, you know, duly acquire. All I need to do is give you the proof. So for you to say, oh, it's your colleague that, that uh, made you to make that statement, is diversionary and unnecessary. All right, Let, let's, let's get this thing clear, because if there are evidences, the court actually came up like you have said, and they said he, Senator Buruji Kashamu, is not the one. It's his. I have brother. a copy of the judgment here. Yeah. All right. You know now, that? if that is the case, why are they still insisting till it's now? Because of ignorance of people like Ofoyeju. You know, because ordinarily. No, this, this, let this me, I'll tell you one thing. This is even about. Let me tell you one other thing. Mm. The NDLEA gave evidence in this three year proceeding. Two of their top officers, the director of of prosecution of NDLA, the director of administration, these are the top officers in NDLA. They gave evidence before the court in England. And they gave evidence, they confirmed, and I have a letter, they are reaching me a letter, because I was in this matter from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I, I had questioned their collaboration with the United States, even at that time. Because mm -hmm. the United States is in charge of our NDLA. Because they, they train the people, they give them money, and so on and so forth. So on the basis of that, they were cooperating with the United States of uh, the government. So when I came into the picture, I questioned that and threatened them with a lawsuit. And they wrote me a letter confirming that they had made misstatements to the United States government. First of all, they had lied. They said that 
uh, his brother Diwali had died. When I confronted them with these matters and the evidence, they ch changed their mind and said, it's true, his brother is alive. We just said that because we didn't have any record. I, I have the letters here. Everything is here. And all these so were presented the before the court. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, when we took them to court, they now agreed to send their officers to give evidence in, in London. So NDLA gave evidence in London with the approval of the Attorney General at the time mm -hmm. that Bridget Kashamu is different from Adewale Kashamu and Bridget Kashamu is not involved in drugs. So for Has, has Buruji Kashamu at any time gone before the U.S. court to clear himself in any way or form? I don't know whether you understand the way the judicial process operates. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm not obliged okay. to go to a court to go and clear my, my, my name. Okay. I'm not obliged to do that. I can mm -hmm. sue you for libel, and he has sued many people for libel. Mm -hmm. Everybody who has... Who has now now that them. the U.S. government is insisting that he has They're a case to insisting. answer... They're not insisting. They're not. You see, and that's part of the misinformation. Okay. Uh, the United States government is not insisting. Mm -hmm. After 2003, the United States government did nothing. They left him alone. They left him because they knew they had no evidence to establish that he's involved in anything. So they, they don't even want to bring him to trial in America. But guess what? He felt for the four years he had spent in, in, in detention, mm -hmm. fighting to clear his name. And he cleared his name then. They were, they were obliged to pay him some damages. So on that basis, he went to America to start action against the United States government. For damages. Now, for damages. now to be able to do that, he had to set aside the indictment because they kept the indictment. They did not withdraw the indictment. They didn't withdraw his name from that indictment. Mm -hmm. So he had to have that indictment set aside first to be able to make a case for, for the damages. Mm -hmm. so, and that's the reason why there was now an, uh, the, an application to set aside that indictment on the basis of the findings of the, of the judges in, in, the UK. In, in the UK. You understand? And that is what has progressed to where we are today because he has taken action to set aside that indictment. Now, whilst he was involved in all that, he heard that there were plans to abduct him in Nigeria. No, you see, and you've got to understand that there's a difference between rendition and extradition. Mm -hmm. uh. you, generally, in Nigeria, there's a tendency to mix it up, to think that you can yeah. just pick up a man on the street, like Ofoyeju is saying, and transfer him to America. First of all, nobody has a right in Nigeria to, uh, to take a citizen of Nigeria and transfer him to another country. There's a procedure. It's called extradition. It is based not only on treaty, it's mm -hmm. based on law. There's an extradition act in Nigeria. And guess what? NDLA has no role to play in extradition in Nigeria. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, come back. No we'll still come play. back to this. Let's, let's still go on a break and then we come back mm -hmm. to have better understanding. But yeah. don't forget, we're going out on TVC Entertainment. And viewers there can continue watching the breakfast program on TVC Nigeria on Concert Channel 190 and DSTV Channel 418. Of course, you can continue to watch the show on Go TV 45 and ACTV 510. Stay with us. Right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast. We're still talking about the case between uh, Buruji Kashamu and uh, uh, the allegations against him. And we have uh, his lawyer with us in the studio, uh, Ajibola Oluyede. He has been there from the start on this, and he's been taking us through uh, some of the cases in here. Now, let's let's still play some of the uh, issues we discussed with uh, Michel Lofoyeju, the public affairs, a head of public affairs of the NDLEA, and then uh, he gives us all the biggest. We had him on the show and he said so many things, so certainly we need to hear from all the sides. For him to, uh, you know, put up this show, you know, in defiance of uh, the law, it's most unfortunate because what is the implication for drug control for the country? What are the diplomatic implications for the country? And what is the way forward for the fight against narcotics in Nigeria? So we are being conscious of all this and a lot of factors have been taken into of all this and a lot of factors have been taken into consideration. It's not going to be abducted. Let me place that on record. Mm. He will not be abducted. Hmm. He right. will not be abducted. Yeah. Uh, you can see, look, uh, we had the debate 
during the course okay. of the abduction okay. that failed. And I, I don't even like was debating it, was with it, him. Was it, was it a case of an abduction? He has no clue. He's completely clueless. I don't even know why they make him uh, head of their... Because he, do, he, can't, he doesn't speak for NDLA. NDLA. What, what does the NDLA have against Buru Jikashamu? Nothing. Can you, can you nothing. tell us? NDLA gave evidence mm -hmm. in London mm -hmm. that they know Buru Jikashamu, they know Adewale Kashamu. That Adewale Kashamu was pursued by them. They in, know in Buru Jikashamu and his brother yes. as what? The Nobri Kashamu is not involved in drugs. Okay. They know his brother is involved in, in drugs. They gave that evidence before the court. It's on the basis of their evidence and other evidence from other countries who came like to give evidence in, in the court there mm. that the court found, the court actually found that it is Adewale Kashamu that America should be pursuing, not Buruji Kashamu. That's what the court found. No, right now, earlier you said the NDLEA does not even have a role in an extradition they process. They don't, you see. Who, who the, is supposed to be? The Extradition Act mm -hmm. prescribes a procedure. That procedure can only be initiated by the Attorney General of the Federation. Now, how does he do that? He has to receive a formal request from, from the government of the country that wants that person extradited okay. in writing. There's a form you must take. It must be addressed to the Attorney General. Then on the basis of that, Attorney General can then ask somebody to do a, a local investigation. If he's now satisfied, he goes before a court and applies to that court for the extradition of that person. Inside the proceedings, in the course of that proceeding, mm. he can ex parte ask, that is, without notice to the person, he can ask for a warrant for his arrest if he thinks the man is going to abscond. So are you saying that none of this has happened? There has not been any correspondence none between of this the U.S. There is and no request. the Nigerian there Attorney is General. There is no request. Now let's backtrack to what you said earlier yes. before we went on that break. You, you said Buruji attempted to uh, set aside the indictment yes. on him, which was not done by the U.S. court. That's right. Uh, what are you trying um, to tell us then? Is this an attempt to get Buruji or any Nigerian for that matter to answer to a case of drug uh, peddling in the U.S. is that what it is? Which one? That or uh, the the U.S. court refused to set aside the case uh, of indictment see, if, uh, of Buru Jikasha. The, the lawyers. The, or is it because the U.S. does not want to pay damages to Buru Jikasha? Yes, I believe. I believe very strongly this? that I, I, we've said this many times in in America itself mm. because I constantly travel there and I'm involved in the various processes that are going on there. And we have said so, even to the courts, that the reason why there is so much fervor from the district attorney's office is because there's a woman there who was guilty of this suppression. The suppression of the evidence that exonerated him. There was one woman there who was a deputy to the district attorney who took the decision that they should not give that evidence to the court. Now, that is what is called in their system prosecutorial misconduct. Mm -hmm. Now, she has a reason why she does not want this indictment to be removed. Because if the indictment is, be, is removed, there would be an immediate probe, an immediate investigation into her own conduct. Okay. So she's very, she's still there till today. She's very much, she's emotionally committed, emotionally. All right, well, what, what is her own interest in this mm. whole issue? O originally, I'm sure she had no interest. But the minute she made that four part, of suppressing that evidence, she became involved. Because now it became her own reputation. It became her own career. It became her own professional well, for her, for standing. Her, for her to even suppress any evidence, it's mm -hmm. possible there is, there should have been an interest for her to even suppress any evidence at all. Nobody knows what the, like I said to you, till today, we do not even know how Bruji Kashamu's name got on that indictment. We don't know because there was nothing brought before the grand jury. So all the talk about grand jury indicted is just part of the ignorance. So as, being, as, being Buruji's, spread as Buruji's lawyer now, yes. has there been any kind of input from Nigeria's attorney general? Whether yes. you know, the I'll present you, one or the past one? All, what now, has, the past one. Yes. Now, what you have to understand is that, like I told you, America mm -hmm. never came after Buruji Kashamu. Mm -hmm. Buruji Kashamu went after America. Mm. Now... First of all, partly to also establish that he had cleared his name because 
his political adversaries were always raising this issue that ah he has an indictment against him in the united states so he wanted to also use that opportunity to establish that i have cleared my name so now the whole fervor comes from nigeria here the whole the recent trying to get him to go to america all the uh, misinformation the propaganda that is being spread even through a foyeju against him is politically motivated there are people who believe that if they can get rid of him from the system, their political careers will find some kind of footing. And that's why they're committed to one way or the other, exporting him from this country, even so illegally. So on one front, Buru Jikashamu faces some political detractors or mischievous yes. uh, persons, according to uh, him, who want him to be forcibly transported to the U.S. That's right. That's on the one hand. And then on another front, you have this woman. Uh, we don't know what her now, name as is. As I said, all these are in, in the U.S. You have this yes. woman in the U.S. Yes. who wants to save her neck. Her, more her or name less. is Diane MacArthur. Uh, Diane, Diane MacArthur. MacArthur yes. Okay. And you have the U.S. court that has refused to set aside uh, Buru Jikashamu's prayer uh, to, of course, uh, not indict no, him no, in no, this no. particular case. No, no, no. That is not what happened. What? Look, let me tell untie, you what happened. Untie is this it, not you, you don't have enough time on your program. No, go ahead. For this, Don't worry about that. I will Just do the best give us I can. as much clarity now, as this possible. This last proceeding yes. had to do not with extradition, okay. not even with the indictment. Mm -hmm. This last proceeding had to do with the information he had. Remember, this proceeding was started in 2014, uh, 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 mm -hmm. December. This one that you are, you, this the judgment particular is being, one. Yes. Okay. We started in December 2014 when he got information. At his, we started two actions, one in the U.S., one in Nigeria. Because we got information from, and I remember many of you must know, from Obla, mm -hmm. who is the senior advocate of Nigeria, who told me personally that I should warn my client that Obasanjo and Attorney General had meetings and he was privy to that. And Obasanjo had said that, you know, he had a private jet waiting to export him. Now, on that business, we went to court. We went to court in Nigeria because we were not going to do extradition. On the extradition. basis of hearsay? On the basis of that information. Okay. Yes, it, it may appear like hearsay, you know, but it was information given, which we believed. Mm. And we did other investigation and found other reasons and information that we could bring before the court. So we went before the Nigerian court and said there is a plan to abduct him, not ex even extradite him. Then we went before the American court and said there's a plan to use American agents to abduct a, a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have to stop it because it's contrary to your law. There's a law called the Mansfield Act. It prohibits law enforcement agents in America from arresting anyone outside American territory for narcotics crimes. So on that basis, we went to American court. We also went to Nigerian court against NDLA. Okay. to stop them mm -hmm. and the attorney general went to the american court against the and american, what's what's uh, the outcome agent. what's the outcome of the case in now, nigeria the outcome of the case in nigeria was that in the course of the case in the middle of the case mm -hmm. after the court had given an injunction that ndla should stop all action mm -hmm. ndla went to his house as you all know and laid siege to the house for six days but there's and, it's right, not now, just the, the case the, of um, drug um, heroin uh, peddling here there's still the money laundering case there is Has no money been... laundering case okay there's no there is no money laundering case. all right all it, that we, is we, just we, ad, ad, being added on the air there's well, no evidence of any money laundering all right we, there we was need no to, allegation of money laundering we need, we need to end the show now but but make us understand in all of this has there been a call to bring his brother or to produce his brother in in the hope because he said it's a case of mistaken identity has his brother been brought before it, the it, guess before? what is not is not the ndla Neither is he the United States DEA, uh -huh. nor is he uh, Interpol to go and arrest his brother and go and produce his brother to somebody and say, here is my brother, I've arrested him. But where you. is the brother now? That is not a question for me to answer. Okay. So um, going forward, what's the next uh, line of action from you? The, the next line of action is that people like Ofoye, you ought to be removed from their position because they are, they're, they're well, speaking... That False well, that, that's, okay. that's your opinion, because yes. the point there is that it is your word against his, his it's not, word against you. It's, it's the record against him, the record. Uh, fine. The record that all, shows all that Nigerian those, government, all of those, all of the those. Nigerian courts, the Nigerian courts have said you have no right 
to touch this man because he has been exonerated from this crime. When, when, when the law is on ground, there are that, that is the, That's what the Nigerian sites, courts have said. And there are sites to the law. So, so now if the Nigerian court says that and you come to the television and say that you are going to go ahead anyway, no matter what the court say, that is, that's criminal. All right. I, I, you, I, I, such a person should not be in that office. Ajibola Oluyedi, thank you very much for coming to uh, give us a shed more light on this case this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll go on a break and we come back to uh, discuss our other topics. Stay with us.